I'll only be a couple of minutes, guys. I'll, I'll just pop my B-Road back screen on and leave you with some of that epic music that plays in the background of my B-Road back screen. I don't call it epic because it's great. I call it epic because that's what it's called. Uh, whoever wrote it called it epic. Um, I'll leave you with my B-Road back screen and I'll be back in just a couple of minutes while I grab a fresh cup of coffee. So I'll be right back, guys. Okay. I have that hot cup of coffee, which I need throughout the day. <laughs> you guys know it's the only thing that keeps me going. I need, need coffee. All right. So let's, um, again, we'll, we'll tackle the lights a little bit later. Let's look at, um, working on our banisters here. Our railing sections. And again, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this piece. For these ends. Yeah, copy is life, Smurfberry. That's exactly right. Uh, Smurfberry says they replaced the copy machine at work with uh, at work two days after removing the old machine. We had no copy for a day and a half. Oh no! I'd riot if they tried to remove the copy machine that we have at work. I would riot. I, I can't live without copy. None of the designers can that I know. We <laughs> we all, we're all copy addicts. So they replaced the machine, though. Well, at least they replaced it, I guess, eventually. But uh, taking two days to replace it, or two, yeah, it's not good. Not good at all. No, I need the copy. Need the copy. Oh, they switch vendors? Okay, fair enough. Is the new copy okay though? Cause sometimes when they do that, the new copy is pretty crap. Like, uh, businesses do that all the time where they'll change um, change the vendor around, but yeah, sometimes the new vendor's copy can be rubbish. So hopefully the uh, replaced vendor's copy is just as good. New copy is okay? Cool. You think the old one was slightly better? But it's close on? Oh, okay. As long as it's close enough. Uh, I'm the sort of person that once I find a brand or a vendor of copy that I like, I always tend to stick to it. And I really don't like changing vendors very much or brands very much. Of course, that's because that, uh, many years ago now, uh, I actually went out with um, someone whose family owned a coffee company here in Australia. Uh, so I got to be very um, opinionated when it came to my coffee. They used to, uh, th they're actually a large manufacturer in this country of coffee, of specialty coffee. Um, yeah, and they, they, the family owned this uh, copy company. So, Prior to that, I was an instant copy person, but I can't stand that stuff anymore. Just a bit of trivia for you guys, a bit of background on me. I'll pull that in a little bit. I'm going to move this over a little bit too. I don't want the end of my um, railing there to be sticking through the end of my pillar. Um, but coffee is life and yeah, it's really important. To me anyway. Alright, now I, I put place this here because I wanted to check what was going on with our, um, our ceiling panelling piece here. And we are getting a gap, so we're going to have to move it up. There's no two ways around it. The other thing I'm going to have to check here when we jump into the level is you see the problem we're having with this parallax mapping on our uh, panelling. That's because our camera is starting to get a bit too close to the top of the ceiling. We may have to look at that. And it may be a case that we may not be able to use the parallax mapping at the back of the building here. 
But first things first, let's fix this um, this plaster ceiling piece. And the only way we're going to be able to fix this, I think, is to to scale it back in. So that we can pull it up. That's covering our little gap up, so that's good. But again, we have this problem with the uh, parallax mapping. And you just can't get away from that. That is just uh, an artifact of having parallax mapping. Uh, it's okay from down here, but if our, if our player or our camera moves up here too high, we're going to have this problem. Um, it's probably okay here. It's just at a distance now we're seeing it. So what we may have to end up doing is just removing the parallax effect from probably this center panel. The other two panels should be okay. Uh, and again, it's okay when we're actually in, in underneath the panel, but it's just at a distance. We're going to have that problem. So we've got a couple of options. We can either remove the parallax effect from that paneling piece. We can place some sort of um, curtain through here, which will cover up a lot of it. We may end up doing that just to add a bit more interest through here anyway. Uh, we'll leave it until we've got more of the assets in to decide what we want to do there. I think, I think that's the plan of action. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Smurf Smurfberry says I may be able to break it up with some other geometry and that's, that's true. Um, that is very true. So, but, but we'll wait till we get some more pieces of geometry in the level before we decide exactly how we want to tackle this. Gonna move that over, I think. Uh, 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 uh. Just got to scale it up just a touch, I think. It's just a little bit small. I think it may be a bit high actually too. We're getting just a bit of intersection happening here in the corners with the ceiling, so I might just pull it down. Smidgen. That's better. But yeah, we may be able to uh, use some geometry to sort of hide the uh, the panel from the camera view when we move it, the camera up the stairs here. I really don't think if we remove the parallax effect from this anyway, uh, it's going to be incredibly noticeable regardless. I think um, if we remove the parallax from this paneling piece, I don't think you're going to notice it personally, uh, but we'll, we'll tackle that once we've got a bit more of the geometry in the level and we start setting our cameras up. I think that's the best way to go. So we'll ignore it for now and we'll come back to it. But let's finish placing some of our banister sections in. Uh, we need one for the interior piece here. Um, now again, I'm trying to remember how I did this. I think I actually created a separate piece for there. Again, jump into my blueprints and have a look at what we've got. A small railing, multi-iron, Square railing work. It'll be one of these two. I can't remember which one. Let's start with this one. Uh, 
Uh, let's rotate it. Again, I'm, I'm going to pull it over near this piece. I'm just doing this while I do the scaling so I get the scales all, all the same, so that all the railings are the same height. Uh, again, we, we wouldn't have to do this if we didn't scale our building up once we'd brought it into uh, Unreal, but because we scaled our building up, it's uh, throwing the scale off on our assets. And, and instead of me re-exporting every asset again uh, to a larger scale, it's just as easy, easy for me to do it in um, Unreal. So, and once we do it once, we don't have to do it again. Again, I'm just, just scaling it up so I can get it to the same size as the other railing. And that's good. It looks like I rotated it in the wrong direction, so let's rotate it 108. Uh, no, I didn't. I had it right to begin with. Just being hidden inside my floor. There we go. Okay, let's uh, again grab one of these end wooden uh, corner pieces and duplicate it. Let's uh, pull this stair railing in as well. Like I said, we're going to be re I'm going to jump back into Max and redo this carpeting. Uh, actually, make it a mesh. So what I'll do is I'll remove it from the texture and re-export the mesh so we can re-import it here into um, Unreal. But we can place the railing in the meantime. So let's do that. Again, I'm just going to have to scale it up so it fits our other pieces. This one's going to be a little bit more tricky because it's uh, on an angle, so the scale is I'm going to have to do by eye. I do know that this piece here, though, is thicker than that. It has to cover the side of our stair here, so... So I'm going to be judging it by the height of the railing. Actually, move it back a bit. Interesting. I'm just looking at why it's not um, the same length. Why would that be? Blueprint, blueprint. Again, I'm just going to jump quickly back into Max and check that.
Let me select an object so we can um, lock onto it. Okay, I do have geometry through here as well, so I might place those in too. I'm just wondering why our railing piece is not meshing up. Again, my mouse is going spastic. Actually, looks like it's in the wrong spot to begin with. It's too far in. But it should go to the very top of the step. Let's jump back out of Max and go back into Unreal. Maybe it needs to be scaled up a bit more. Touch more. Let's get our um, wooden pieces here through the top of the ceiling before I forget to put them in. Which are these... Um, these ones here, I think. Again, we're going to have a railing piece here that's going to cover up that bit that's sticking out at the edge. Although I think what I may do is scale it in a little bit as well. I'm trying to breathe, I'm sinking underwater I try to escape 
I think I'm drowning and this feeling gets stronger and I'm not quite ready to pray. I'm trying to breathe, I'm sinking on the water. I try to escape. I think I'm drowning and this feeling gets stronger and I'm not quite ready to pray. I'm trying to breathe, I'm sinking on the water. I try to escape. I think I'm drowning and this feeling gets stronger and I'm not quite ready to pray. Okay, again, that's part of the problem with our um, parallax map, that bit of black shadowing was going on in the corner. Let me pull that back up again so it's in the right spot. So again, we'll leave that just there for now, but I may have to come back and look at that. But we want, a, we want another one of these railings uh, at the front. So let's rotate it around. Right, smooth, very, very fancy. And let's duplicate one more for the front here. It's one of the advantages of uh, doing 3D, you can, you know, create something you could never probably live in. <laughs> Looks like we need to just extend our, our plaster work a little bit more. So up you go. No, why are you doing that? Okay, now that we have that border, we can bring this ceiling piece down a little bit just to uh, fill in that gap. Thanks, Sniper Echo. Yeah, now we're getting the interior done pretty quickly. It was The exterior took a while to do all of that uh, vegetation and stuff, but... Because we took our time at the beginning when we were making our assets and we brought them all in one by one, um, it doesn't take quite as long to do the interior. And because we're reusing a lot of our assets as well. All right, let's get one of those light fittings in because we have a light for up here as well. Uh, building. This is the one I want. Again, let's just wait for Unreal to create our shader. up a bit because we want to make this light a bit of a feature here on on our uh, ceiling. 
uniform scale though. Let's get the rest of our uh, ceiling uh, uh, railing sections in. Actually, before we do that, let's um, fix this just here. Jump back into our blueprints folder. I think I have a smaller railing section. Yeah. Okay, now we already pulled this one. Oh no, we didn't. This is a separate, different piece. Okay. I was just going to say we already have this small piece here that we can duplicate but we, this is a different design, I think. Yeah. This one has two metal pieces with a bar in the middle, and this one has two bars on the end with uh, metal pieces in the middle. So, first things first is to rotate it and scale it so it's the same size as the other pieces. to a non-uniform scale. No. No, no, no. Of course, the other way I could do to make sure the scale is exactly the same is select one of them and look at the scale size that's placed in here. What are you showing me? You're working on some custom rock faces at the moment, Sniper Echo. Let's have a look. I will have a look. Uh, Sniper Echo says you've never done anything like this before. All right, let's have a look. Sniper Echo is working on a, a uh, an environment in Unreal Engine 4 as well, and he's doing rocks for his environment at the moment. Uh, again, this is a lovely sculpture that uh, Smurfberry Barbecue is working on of a plant. Really detailed plant that he's using um, mud box to create. Uh, Smurfberry Echo says it's not textured yet, just the base colour. Okay, let's have a look. But um, a piece from Sniper, uh, Smurfberry Barbecue is looking great. And Sniper Echo says he's trying to get the workflow down. Uh, that is nice rock work, Sniper Echo. I'm curious as to uh, what are you trying to achieve here? Is this a mesh? Is this a texture? What, what's going on here? A mesh, I'm assuming. I see you've got your character in there for scale. Um, the rock texture is looking great. Really nice. And this is just the base colour, okay. It does look a bit like Blasted Rock Smurf Fairy, you're right. Yeah, it does look a little bit like that, but no, it, it's look, it looks great. I'm just curious as to why you have it on a, um, a square panel. Yeah, the Sniper Echo says it's a mesh with only basic colour. Smurfberry says there are a few oddities with some triangles going on. I'm not sure where. I don't notice any. Unless you're talking about my work. 
I don't notice any uh, oddities particularly here. Not that I can see. No, oh, okay. Smurfberry says he was going for that look. Okay, yeah, no, that's cool. I'm just curious as to why it's on a um a plane like that, a, a square plane. Are you, unless you're maybe doing um a cliffside or something, maybe, maybe, or well, you just uh, you've just done it to get a better idea of what the rock is going to look like. But yeah, I'm just curious as to why it's on a square. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> And yeah, where it's going to be used. Uh, when I when you told me you were doing rocks, I thought you meant um, the type of rocks I've got going on in my level, like you know, boulder type rocks. Uh, looks like maybe you're doing a cliff face or something. Unless I'm mistaken, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, getting back to. Um, Smokeberry Barbecue's comment about oddities with some triangles. I'm, I'm not sure if he means things like this here. I can see a try there. I can see a bit of a try happening here. Uh, Sniper Echo says it's going to be on a cliff side with some industrial supports. Okay, and you have to make the actual roll. Okay, okay, cool. Yep, no, I assume that's probably what, what you were doing. I, it was just when you told me you were doing rocks, I thought you meant boulders. And I didn't realise you meant like cliff-based rocks. That's cool. Um, again, it really depends on how you're going to be placing this in your Unreal level. Uh, for a cliff base, um, I would still create like really large pieces of geometry. I wouldn't tend to just go for a, like a square and then maybe duplicate that around. I, I, I would actually model like a, a bit of a cliff face itself so it's not completely flat but it's undulating a bit as a piece of geometry, as a mesh, and use that on the side of it. Okay, what's this? Um, Sniper Echo has posted a link saying this is probably better geo. Okay. And let's have a look. Okay, that's, that's nice. I can see the uh, actual detail in the texture here, which is great. Yeah, that's no, looking really nice. With the uh, with the right texture on, it's going to look really realistic. It's going to look great. Uh, I, 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 and Snowberry says he thinks that's picked up the oddities. Yeah. And what are you showing me, Snowberry? Here, just uh, another. Let's have a look. Smurfberry's link. Oh, okay, yeah. He's just pointing out the oddities he was noticing in the image. Let's jump back to the um, render we've got here from Smurf uh, Sniper Echo. Yeah, sometimes uh, these little oddities you notice in, in in a render can be just rendering oddities. Sniper Echo says, uh, although he wants to have some of them to highlight where the rock has been blasted away. No, that, that's fair enough. Rock will split. Uh, away from a, a rock face pretty smoothly. You'd be surprised. <clears throat> Depending on the type of rock it is, you can get very clean cut lines. So that's not unusual. Um, I think what Smurfberry Barbecue though was talking about was um, here. 
he, he thought he was talking about these little tries that I can see here, but they're less noticeable here in the render. So. And Smurperi says, how are you planning on doing the texture Photoshop? Yeah, how are you going to do the texture, um, Sniper Echo? Are you going to Photoshop it? Are you going to, um, yeah, what are you going to do? Substance Paint? It's Photoshop? Gimp? <laughs> I'd be curious as well. Um, I know that, that Sniper Echo uses Nald, K-N-A-L-D, which is what I use as well to create my normal maps from um, bitmaps. So... Certainly just start using a texture that you either do in Photoshop or a paint program and then taking that into Nile will give you a nice result. For sure. You don't need to use Substance Painter. Substance Painter can create some really nice um, rocks, like textures for rocks. But you don't need to use it. Uh, Sniper Echo says either Substance or Photoshop. Either one will work well. Substance Painter will certainly look great. Uh, Photoshop and Nulled, which I know you use, will also look really great. So, um, I'm not sure how high poly this mesh is. Yeah, I'm not sure how high poly that is. If it's really high poly though, then um, then bake out the high poly to the low poly in Substance or in Nulled, because you'll get really nice results with a lower poly with a bake from um, either Substance or Nulled. Which is what I ended up doing and yeah, no, you, you can use a pretty low polygon mesh to get really nice detail still in your normal map. <laughs> um, we actually may leave it there for today guys. Uh, I look forward to seeing this though, so, uh, Sniper Echo, when you've uh, placed it in that environment because the environment was looking great. And I, look, I certainly look forward to seeing this as well, um, Smurfberry Barbecue. It, it's looking really nice, nice detailing. Uh, so please guys pop back into chat and show us when you've um, done a bit more work on them. We actually may leave it there for today though guys. Um, I will be back on Monday next week at 5pm. You probably will see the channel go live um, on Saturday UK time and US time. I think it's like early morning US and about midday uh, on in the UK. That's sub uh, vodcast, so I'm not live. I play previous vodcasts. I call it Replay Saturday uh, on Saturdays. So the channel will go live, but I won't be live. It'll be a vodcast, just to make that clear, so you don't think that I'm uh, I'm actually streaming live. I, I generally am in chat though at the beginning of the vodcast for a little while, but. I start the podcast my time at around midnight, so it plays overnight while I'm in bed. So I won't be in chat for the entire time the podcast is on, but I probably will be around at the beginning of the podcast if you want to ask me anything. Um, <clears throat> so do feel free to pop into chat and ask me at the beginning of the podcast. Uh, do remember my Twitter page at Phil Does 3D. I always post there when I go live, live, which is Monday, Tuesday, usually Wednesday. Uh, you'll jump in and say hi Sniper Echo, cool, let's have a look at this link just before I go. Um, yeah, I normally stream on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at 5pm US, but I've had to drop Wednesdays just for the next month or two because these, my workload at the studio is, is really full on. That's really nice Sniper Echo, yep, that's looking great. Very nice. That will certainly make a nice looking rock inside of our Unreal. Did you do this render in um, View? It looks like a View render to me. View does rocks beautifully, by the way, because that's what it was created for. It was created for environment uh, rendering, and it certainly makes really nice rocks. I'm assuming you're using one of the uh, one of the functions here to create this texture. Uh, uh, it looks like a function that's inside of View placed on one of their rocks. This is in Blender. Oh, that's really interesting. Cool. Well, I'm impressed. Yeah, it actually looks like a, a view rock. You can get the same sort of look in view as well. That looks really good. And like I said, it's going to look great inside of Unreal. So yeah, for sure. Render out uh, from a high to a low poly from that and bring it into Unreal and it'll look outstanding with the right texture on it. Very nice. 
You're quite welcome, Smokeberry Barbecue. Thank you guys very much for um, hanging out and for watching the stream. I really do appreciate it. Um, <laughs> like I said, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope you have a great 4th of July Independence Day Smokeberry Barbecue. Um, again, thanks guys for popping into chat and showing your work. You're not good at sculpting at all, Sniper Echo. Well, you know, more pra practice makes perfect, as they say. Um, yeah, do I do want to thank you guys very much for watching and for being in chat. I will be back on Monday next week. I hope you guys have a great weekend. You're quite welcome. Thank you for being here, guys. I really do appreciate it. And thank you. It's great. It's great to see you too, Smokeberry Barbecue. Um, hopefully, we'll catch up again sometime when you're uh, not working. <laughs> Yep, I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great weekend and uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you later.